Hey guys, it's Genevieve, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how to simulate using layer styles from Photoshop but in Procreate. I got the idea for this tutorial from a question that I got on Instagram. And this person was saying, you know, Genevieve, I bought the Ultimate Watercolor Toolbox, and I do have Procreate, but I don't have Photoshop. And I was wondering, can I still use the layer styles to create a quick and easy watercolor effect? The short answer would be no, because Procreate doesn't support layer styles. However, I've included everything that you would need uh, to simulate them in Procreate within the product. So you could still kind of do a really quick and easy workaround and get a similar effect within Procreate. So that's what we're going to do today. And you can use this technique to create any type of texture. So you could create a paper texture, a wood texture, a metal texture, whatever you want, uh, using the same steps and using a reference image or textured image. But in this case, we're going to use the watercolor effect because that's what the question was about. Speaking of the watercolor effect, if you're looking for a quick way to create really cool digital watercolor pieces, I'll link the ultimate watercolor toolbox below and I might also include a promo link just for you guys. So check it out if you're interested. Let's dive in. So to get this effect, you will need to have some sort of an image or photo that has a texture you want to re recreate in a Procreate. And to do that, you can either take a picture with your phone or your iPad, or you can go online and get a free to use picture that has the texture you want. If you don't know where to look at, um, I'll link to a couple website in the description below that has a bunch of really high quality free image. In our case, like I said, we're going to use the watercolor toolbox, which is already on my iPad. A couple notes. Since I'm using the watercolor toolbox, I have the pre-textured watercolor file, and I'm just going to hide the effects uh, that are already in this file just so you can see that what we're going to do already works within itself, no matter if you have the effects or not. And really important thing too is you want ideally to have the image that you want the effect to be on, you want that to be on a separate layer because you want the background to be separated basically. If not, it's not too big of a deal, but ideally try to have it on a separate layer. Now that you have everything in your file, we're just going to import the texture images. And the way to do that is you're going to go click on this tool icon here. And depending on how you imported the file on your iPad, so if you took a picture, it's going to be an insert a photo. But in our case, it's a zip file, so it's going to be insert a file. Just click on that. Great. <laughs> okay, it just worked for some reason. Um, so if you're using the Ultimate Watercolor Toolbox, it's going to be the Splashes PNG folder that you're going to use. And you see I have over 60 different watercolor splashes to use. So go ahead and look at them and pick one that you like, the texture of. The color really doesn't matter, and I'll show you why in, in a few seconds. I quite like this one because it has a nice texture. Click on it, and it's going to import straight and appropriate. And then you can resize it and really quickly kind of place it over the image. And C creates a new layer which has your texture on it or your photo on it. Now I said the color doesn't matter, and you're probably wondering why, because right now it's this bright green thing and that's not what we want. So <laughs> we're going to make it black and white. Go into your adjustment panel here. Hue saturation and brightness, and lower the saturation all the way down to zero. Okay, that's good, but the texture is just kind of all over the place and doesn't look good at all. That's why I was telling you that it's really helpful to have the shape on a separate layer, because we are going to create a clipping mask. If you click on the layer which has the texture on it, and create clipping mask, you'll see that the the texture is just only going to be applied to the layer right below it, so only to the color below it, and not everywhere around. So that's what we want. Now the last thing we have to do is change the blending mode so it doesn't look like this really weird gray thing. So go ahead and click on this little N here, and it's going to open up the blending modes for the layer, and select color burn. And you see now it's blending in with the color below it in a really, really nice way. Now we just have to repeat it on this leaf. 
or if you have many different sections on your image and you want to add a, a bunch of different texture, you can do that too. So insert a file, just select one that you like, roughly pr place it over your image, hue saturation brightness, you lower the saturation all the way down to zero, create a clipping mask, and change the blending mode to color burn. Or it could be linear burn too, depending on, on what you want, but I think I'm going to go with color burn. I'm going to add one more. Maybe a, a last one. <laughs> I don't know why I keep clipping, clicking on adjustment here. Um, <laughs> now's the time. And see now you have really nicely textured uh, image. And if you add the textures and effect from the pre-textured watercolor file, it looks even more realistic. A couple more things I'm going to teach you how to do is if you do have the watercolor toolbox, you also have the watercolor brushes. And if you've watched any of my tutorials, you know that my favorite part about drawing a watercolor uh, piece in Procreate is to use the salt brush. So of course I'm going to show you uh, the salt brush in this tutorial too. So go ahead and, and select it and making sure we are on the right layer. You are going to draw from the outside towards the inside and you see you're just adding some really cool like white little speckles that add even more texture on your on your piece. I'm going to add it on this, oops, this leaf as well. And see, it's just even better. We're also going to add some splatters. Yeah, with a splatter brush. I'm just going to go over real quick. And maybe change the blending mode to linear burn. And we're really getting something that looks super cool. Final trick is if you go and select your leaf or whatever color or shape you have, you can add some fake watercolor gradients in it. And you've probably seen me use this technique before, but basically you select the selection tool and you create some sort of a squiggle shape on top. And you feather that shape around 30%. It doesn't have to be super precise. And you go back to your adjustment here. Again, hue, saturation, brightness and you change the hue a little bit. And you see you get, like if I go really extreme, you get this blue color, but if you just change it a tiny little bit, it kind of makes it look looks like you have a few different pigments that are mixing um, in your watercolor as opposed to having just one solid color. It's the final final touches that make all the difference in in my opinion. See? That looks really good. And that took you a few minutes and you didn't have to have any type of drawing experience or anything. You could import a logo or a pre-made uh, icon and just apply this watercolor effect really easily to it. And that would work super well if you want to create really cool Instagram posts, for example. Um, yeah. So if you have any tutorial that you would like to see or any question, please comment below because you see I make sure to read them and I absolutely love to answer them either just by commenting back or by filming a tutorial about it. If you're interested in the watercolor toolbox that I've been using here, I'll link it in the description below and again I might include a, a promo code or, or not, <laughs> we'll see. And uh, otherwise uh, I'll see you soon.